everyone that's here live and, and those that are streaming virtually. My name is Steve Tilly and I'm the Associate Director of the MEN program. Everyone here I think knows me, but welcome. Um, and uh, I'd like to introduce Randy Klavik. He's going to be giving the talk today. Professor Klavik's also teaching um, digital marketing for entrepreneurs and engineers right. in the winter quarter for us. So for those that are interested, you get a, a taste of what he's going to present. And um, for those that are streaming virtually, uh, we try to do webinars uh, every quarter here at Northwestern just to promote our program and give you insights to what our alumni and faculty can offer you here in our program. And uh, just a quick bio about Professor Palavik. He is currently a lecturer in the Medill IMC department and teaches, teaches digital, social, and mobile marketing. And outside of Northwestern, uh, Professor Palavik is the CEO of Marketing Synergy Incorporated, a consulting company dedicated to helping organizations improve their strategic and tactical marketing programs using advanced analytics necessary to meet in today's real-time engagement world. Is that correct? That's correct. Thank All right. You. And today, we're going to learn more uh, about tips and tools to allow you to connect with virtual and actual engineering communities, key executives in your desired field of engineering, and the influencers for discussing trends and important topics. And he's going to show us a lot of tools, tips, and Tricks today, mm -hmm. and thank you so much for your time. Thanks. All right. Welcome. And, uh, Hi, everybody. Yeah. What I'd like to do is, you know, one of the things that's important is that when we, when social media came in, it changed everything, and you know it because you're using social media probably for to network with friends and family. But what a lot of people don't realize is there are massive engineering communities and massive business communities that are functioning every day. And so what I want to do is I want to talk to you about a concept called Network Forward, which is you have the one thing everybody wants. You have current information on the newest technologies that are available in the marketplace. And there are people who are CEOs and head of engineering that are looking for that knowledge. And when the two of you connect, if you have the right tools, you can connect up with them now and establish yourself in the field you want to be in, in the country you want to be in, if you have the right tools and the knowledge of how to do it. And that's what we're going to do in this hour. We're going to talk about how to network forward so that you can build your network now that will be hiring you in the future, and you can connect up with the head of engineering, the head of design, and be able to build the relationships now because you have what they want, knowledge, and they need it, and so we're going to talk about how this all works together. You see at the top, for the people that are online, that is our hashtag. I actually registered it in a, in a, on a product called TWUBS, T-W-U-B-S, which is a free way to actually own your hashtag. So if you haven't done it, go out to TWUBS and put in your hashtag with your name, so at least you own that. And uh, it's a great way to do it. So as you have questions in here, just ask. And if you're online, you go ahead and, and uh, send them in on Twitter. Put the hashtag network forward, and we'll answer it. So here's the key. Everyone you want to connect up with right now is on social. The key, though, is that the big challenge is how do you get to them, and how can you build a relationship with them? And it's really fairly easy once you have the right tools and the right knowledge. And so the key is, the, the, is to network forward, is to begin building your knowledge base by understanding how social works and, the, and have the tools to find the people you want to find. And then you can begin developing a relationship today. And so here's the, here's the key. Uh, Mike Kapoor, who started Lotus123 and is now a... Uh, technical entrepreneur outlined the challenge. And here's the challenge. Getting, it, uh, getting information off the internet is like taking a drink from a fire hydrant. There's so much fake news. There's so much old news. There's so many people that are just voicing their opinions. It's hard to cut through. But what we're looking for in every industry is we want people who are influencers, people who help filter through information and provide information to a target, to us. And if we build trust in that individual, 
Will they'll be our go-to person for the information in the area of their expertise? So where everybody's out looking because this is a problem. You know, we don't know if it's quality information, but once we find people who provide us quality information, in other words, they don't create it, they curate it, then we can build the relationships with them and we begin to follow them professionally. That makes sense to everybody? So here's the deal. One of the things people don't realize is the ecosystem of social, and there are three levels. At the bottom, there are companies that are dedicated to collecting big data. In other words, every tweet, every blog, every article, every video, every podcast is collected up globally by about six companies. And these companies take that data store it in the computers, and then they can, then it begins to go through a processing. But the key is, if you're in Beijing, and you go out to Weibo and post a blog, it's in Canada in less than a minute, ready for analysis using free tools we're going to talk about tonight. What happens is, at the second level, is it pulls out, it takes the raw data, and then the other companies pull out the information. For example, if you have a blog, it's who are you talking about? Who are all the people mentioned? Who are all the companies mentioned? What are all the topics you're discussing within your blog? And is it a positive, neutral, or negative discussion? In other words, are you, which side, what's your sentiment about it? It's all established in a matter of seconds off the feeds that are coming in globally on every topic you can imagine. Then at the top, we have software that allows us to develop insights. You're going to be using that today. So we, get, we go out with the free software and say, who's talking about this topic? What are they saying? Is it a positive or negative thing? Where are they at in the social pyramid, as we're going to talk about? And how can I connect up with them? And so we can go out and monitor real-time conversations with free software that allow us to get a lot of very deep insights as to what people are doing. But that makes sense to everybody? And so here's just some examples. This is a company called Board Reader. It's just changed its name to Social Gist. And look at the volumes. Message boards are doing 40 million posts a day from 1,000 or 500,000 sites. They have blogs and news. You can see the numbers there. These are all things that they're processing every single day. Here's what it is at VK. If you're in Russia, it's already pulled together. Reviews are taken. Uh, custom integration is taken. Then here's site of Weibo, Tencent, and other ones that they are gathering data from China. And every country is the same. This, this data is being funneled in, processed, and made available to you in a matter of minutes. Anywhere on the globe for anything you want to look at. And so, for example, this is Board Reader. Board Reader is a free piece of software. They specialize in the deep dives into data. And we're going to use them a little bit to show you some characteristics of it. But what you do with Board Reader is you punch in any topic you want. Aerospace engineering. You know, what's, going in, what's happening in IT, machine learning system. Anything you want to put in, you put in the board reader. And what it does is it comes back with a real time, here's what people are talking about right now about that topic. And each one of these is live. And you'll see that it's in many, many different languages because it's coming in from all over the world. And it's what people are talking about. In this case, biomedical engineering, I punched it in yesterday. That was the numbers there. And then what we can do for free is you go to the advanced button, and you can now compare the conversations for two or more topics, two to three topics. So you can begin to say, well, what are people really talking about? And you can go back and forth to see, are they talking more, more about this term or that term, this topic or that topic? And you can go out and look at it for any topic, any theme, which is a category of topics like AI, any individual, 
you go and look for yourself and any company that you want. It's completely wide open. It has access to all the data that's happening in the, in the world is being pulled in through here. And so the key thing to think about is when you think about social, you tend to think about it in terms of social networks, Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn. And those are good. I mean, they're good sites and they're important. But those are actually at the top of a very deep pyramid. And a friend of mine, Steve, uh, Steve Dodd, a board reader, actually taught me this. He said, you know, people think about social networks, and they're huge. But the real conversations are the deep dive, long tail conversations that people are having, like an engineering forum where engineers are talking engineering for years. That's really the deep dive. And so what he said was, you got to structure it. And so this is a structure I developed and used. At the top, we have the social networking sites. They're very important because they transfer information and they, they amplify it of interesting things. So if Donald Trump makes a tweet, pretty soon there's lots of activity on the social networking pages because it's very trendy. But they'll all, they can amplify your articles and things as well. But below that, we have the news aggregators. Those are companies like MSNBC, Huffington Post, that are collecting data. They talk about it a little bit longer. Okay, they spend more time on it because it's topical. So the discussions get a little more focused. The next one down are the patient connections. If you've ever used Reddit or Dig, you know, these are ones where people are talking about interesting things over time. The next one down for there, we have the video and audio connection. So video is huge. One of the things I teach in my class, if you have learned next quarter, is that we need to learn how to use video effectively because it's now the way people consume content. You know, my son is, a, is actually a, a auto engineer. And I got to tell you, since high school, I've never seen him read a book. But he has everything online that he needs to diagnose any car, any engine, any problem. He knows how to use it. And so we need to think about how we blend in video and audio podcasts with the social networks to make sure we get to the markets that we want. The next one down, we have our website where we have a lot of content. Then this is a big one, the thought leaders. These are the people who are the influencers who connect together the experts in the community with the average member and actually write the blogs and do the podcasts and do the content that help people understand the new technologies or the things that they're expert in. All right? And so we spend a lot of time down here in my class because if you can connect up with the thought leaders, they can connect you up with the experts you want to meet up with. Does that make sense? The final one at the bottom are virtual communities. Did you know there is a community of engineers active right now that has 7 million engineers on it? I will show you that. There are massive forums. There are massive groups of engineer and engineering managers who are out talking right now. They would welcome you because you have expertise they want. You just have to make the connection. So we'll go through and we'll talk about that. But right now, on any topic you can imagine, and every topic you can't imagine, there are conversations help happening right now in social. You just need to have the right tools to get to it. So this is one of the biggest things. One of the things people think is that I to get into social, I'm going to have to create content. Not true. What people want is this. Content curation is the process of sorting through, sorting through, okay, the vast amounts of content on the web to provide it in a meeting and organized content around a specific theme. In other words, people don't want you to create a lot of content, and you don't have time because you're in college, but they are desperately looking for people who could go through other people's content 
and say, this is important for you to read. This is important for you to watch. In other words, it's curation, not creation, that drives us forward. So the key is, what you need to do is you want to build a Twitter site where there is a rich amount of content flowing through, developed by experts or influencers in the field and topics of importance to your market, then you pick out the good stuff, you retweet it, or you put out a comment tweet, and suddenly people start to pay attention to you. Every time you do that, more people start to follow you because you're filtering through all the stuff to find the good stuff. So we call it filter and focus. Filter all through all the things and then focus me on the good stuff. And if you pick the good influencers, you now become a resource for the time-constrained engineer because you're giving out really good advice and really good information in the areas that they want to learn. That makes sense to you? Okay. This is all on the test. So be ready. <laughs> so they don't have to do it. To become an influencer, what I need to do is curate, not create new content. You know, I have over 30,000 followers, and I rarely produce new content. But I'm really good at taking people from all specialties, bringing them into my website, my Twitter site, or my LinkedIn, and curating it out. Or finding a great piece of new article, a great new article that somebody puts on to Twitter, I take that and I put it into my LinkedIn and say, here's a great article by this person published in this. You ought to read it. When they read it and find out it's quality, I've got another follower. That makes sense? I build my follower network without trying. Well, sure, we'll talk about that later. So here's the deal. To do that, you have to learn how the entire system operates. And this is the definitions you need to know. If I'm searching for something, the first thing I can do is I can look for an exact phrase. So if I look for McCormick Engineering, and when it goes out to search the doc for documents, the documents are a blog, a tweet, a video, anything that we produce. When it goes out, it has to have the exact match. It would have to say McCormick, and the next word has to be engineering for it to pull it to display a place. Everybody okay with that? The second way you can do it is include terms. So I could say I wanted to look for McCormick engineering, but if somebody put out a tweet saying, I really like the McCormick school because they're great at engineering, it'll pick it. Of, or all the all the engineering college I've looked at, McCormick is one I'm really considering. It'll pull that. So it just means that it's included. The next one you have is exclude terms. All right? For those of you who've taken engineering, in electrical engineering, you know there's two types of power supply. There's DC, DC, and the other one is AC, DC. But AC, DC is also what? Band. It's a band. So if I was looking for ACDC power, I could use include terms like ACDC and power must be there. But I could also say I want ACDC excluding Highway to Hell, the names of all the band members, you know, rock, MP3, or anything that would classify the band to take care of it. For example, Kraft wanted to analyze Oreo cookies. What they found was everybody who has a black and white animal, from a gerbil to a hamster to a horse, names it Oreo. So they actually had 400 exclude terms to get to Oreo cookie because everybody uses it. You can also specify in the advanced search of all the tools I'm going to give you, even the free ones. You can look by language or country. And so that helps you to isolate down. Most of them have date ranges, and most of them have what are called sites or domain criteria. And you can leave it blank, but you can also say, I just want to look at the news sites. I just want to look at the bloggers. And so you can actually pull it through. All of the systems, from the free, for fee ones to the free ones, use the same system to make it work. 
Everybody okay with that? And so what I want to do is I want you to actually get started in it today. So here's what I want you to do. Take a piece of paper. If you want to give it out some cards. And what I want you to write down is this. First, identify the industry where you want to be employed after graduation. I mean, go ahead and do it. Aerospace, automotive, wherever you want to go. Second, identify the branch of engineering that is your specialization. Are you aerospace, biomed? You know, what sort of categorization would you have, if any, for where you would you say your specialization is? Next, identify the title of the individual you would like to work for. In other words, I'm not looking for, you can sit, put down companies that you might like, but also you can say, I want to work for the head of engineering or the head of design or the head of whatever that you would want. The big one is number four. I want you to right now write down five themes that would be topics of importance to them. In other words, are they looking at AI, IoT? Are they looking at robotics? What kind, I mean, anything that you think that is keeping them up at night or things that are important, what are five things that those people are looking at that would be important to them. And incidentally, you're going to end up with a lot more than that by the time we're done. But the key is right now, just sort of think it through as to what is keeping them up. Because what they're going to do is they're going to go out on social to find solutions and information on the things that are keeping them up. So if we curate that content, they will come to us. That makes sense? Number four, or number five, what are some conferences and conventions that they might want, that they might attend? In other words, where are they going to go to get information? Because the interesting part is those conferences and conventions all have hashtags. If you use a hashtag in your retweets of articles of importance to them, it will go to everybody who's attending that conference immediately. And if they're the same kind of people as the one you're targeting, they're going to come to you. That makes sense? So the way to use it is we can use those hashtags and conferences and things to, to make it work. And then are there any special communities where they might work? Now, we're going to, or they might network. We'll go out and do that as we go through uh, the rest of the class here. But as we're going through it, you know, think about what are they talking about, what are, what's keeping them up at night, and where would they go to get that information? Because that's how they're going to use social professionally. And if we use it the same way, we're going to be in their sites. Make sense? Questions so far? So what do you need to become influential? Well, the first thing you do is something we call give to get. And what you're going to do to become influential is you're going to find the influencers who are the experts on the topics that you know that your target market is going to be searching for and ones where you have some expertise. And what you want to do is to begin to follow them on Twitter and LinkedIn and perhaps Instagram. Everybody okay with that? And so what we want to do is to get started with that. Then we want to look, using social tools, for themes and topics that you just wrote down on your card. Every one of those is one that people are searching for. And if we can find it, we can filter through lots of content and identify the good stuff. That's what they're looking for. That makes sense? Next, we want to look at hashtags. Hashtags are how communities hang together virtually. And hashtags are used on Twitter, LinkedIn, and Instagram, and other sites. And so if I want to look for big data, I put hashtag big data. 
and chances are there's a lot of conversation going on. Hashtag robotics. Hashtag a special company. I can use it for anything. And anybody else that's in my community or has expertise, if they use a hashtag and I search for it, I will see all their content offering. Does that make sense? The final thing is communities. There right now are huge communities of engineers and other people that are meeting right now and talking right now. If you find some really good piece of new content on your Twitter site, take it over to the community and say, I don't know if you've seen this, but here's a great article by whatever, and you give them all the information so you're not taking their thunder, but you're just amplifying the message. You're getting it to another community of interested people who've never seen it before. And so that's yeah, how we'll do it. So, but you need some tools to do this. So to help us find, you know, and hedge on the fake news, Here's, here's the key you need to know. We form, as individuals, networks and communities where we exchange information. And a community has a set structure. First at the center you have the experts. Those are the people at the cutting edge of a technology, at the cutting edge of a new methodology. They're the people we look for. But experts are hard to get to. So around them are influencers. Influencers write blogs and they, they produce media where they help people explain what's going on with the experts and give that to the final group, which is the members. Those are people who want to have data filtered for them through the influencers from the experts so they can understand what's going on. That makes sense to everybody? And so where you want to be is an influencer. You want to curate content that's of high quality to the target market. So the first thing we have to do is we have to find influencers. And so here's something for you, is that I have training videos that you can have for free. They're out on, on YouTube. And you can go to my web page. But the key is you can go out and actually watch what we're going to do. But I'm going to show you. The key to influencers is they're following key themes in your marketplace. And what they do is we can follow them on Twitter, LinkedIn, and also Instagram. And so what you want to do is we take, I recommend my students take about 10 minutes per day. You have the influencer information flowing in. You go through it, identify the good stuff, and you tweet it out. Every time you do that, more people follow you. So here's an example. Have any of you use follower wonk? Follower Wonk is one of the three that I have video on. What you do is you go to Follower Wonk, hit search bios. You can put in any topic that you want. And what it returns to you are the top influencers who are the most active on that. They're going to be companies and individuals. All right? So here's what you do. Everybody put up your right hand, hold up one finger, and do this. And so you go follow, 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 follow. <laughs> and you follow them. And if they're an influencer that's putting out great stuff, you retweet it. If they're an influencer that's not putting out great stuff, like one of the biggest experts in social media, loves to show you the restrooms he visits, and what he's eating. And so I follow him when I want to, if there's something hot out there. But day to day, I don't, because I don't want all my followers to be looking at all that stuff. Right? But the key is, you, if you find they're not good, quit following them and find others who are. So what I want you to do is to go out to follower Wong, put in the themes that you just talked about, and find the influencer. And then I want you to go out and put in companies and see who the influencers are there, companies where you want to get employed, follow them. And what's going to happen is if you do it for all the themes, you're going to have a wealth of content flowing into your Twitter page, flowing into your LinkedIn page, that you now 
you repurpose out by just retweeting it or giving a comment to it that suddenly begins to draw people to you because you're able to filter and focus them on things of great importance. It's not very hard. Go find them. I give you two other tools to do that as well. Questions? Pretty easy. It would help if I turned this on. The next thing you need to do is evaluate companies and people. And so there are two really advanced tools that you can use for free. The first is Brand24, which is a social site, analytics site, that is located in Poland, and they pull together worldwide information and allow you to really analyze it over time. So you start it up, you can do it for free and for like a month, but you put in a topic, a theme, you start it, and it begins to say, here's what people are discussing, it trends it out, and it builds a word cloud of here are the different topics that are important to that particular theme. And they also tell you where in the world they're doing it and where in the social pyramid they're doing it. That's all free. And so you want to figure out who these people are. So here's one that I love to use. It's called Social Mention. Have you ever used it? I guess not. This is a great tool. What you do is you put in a topic, like I use biomedical engineering. What it tells you is it's a fairly strong discussion. It has a seven to one sentiment, meaning seven positive to one negative, which is a way you can identify crises when it shifts a lot. It's fairly not very passionate, meaning people aren't retweeting a lot on it, but it has a significant reach. And then you can actually look at sentiment. These are live. So you can see the positive or the negative. These are all the conversations going on. You can learn the top keywords. That's how people find stuff in search. Here are the top users, the top hashtags, and where they're at in the social pyramid. And you can do that for anything you want, or any person you want, or any company you want, and it's free. It's all pretty interesting. It's a great tool. And it's one that I use myself to monitor my company. Because if it's going like 10 to 1 positive and all of a sudden it turns around to 1 to 10, that means a lot of people are out there discussing me not in a very good way. We call that a crisis. Well, I can identify the crisis and then I can go put out the flames before they get too big. Next one is hashtags. Hashtags are how virtual communities hang together. And so with the hashtag, they're really critical to use, as well as the app handles of individuals and companies to make it work. For example, this is a one of my students. And she said, the most valuable insight I learned from Pamela Muldoon, that's a very influential podcaster, uh, is on podcasting, that podcasts are valuable to marketing. Next, then they go to the audience. Then she has my name to go off of my follower base. And then hashtag and use social IMC, which is our website for the class. And so now she's broadcasting this out to everybody through the app handle and through the hashtag. And so you need to learn where the hashtags are. And so I'm using a tool to do that, two tools. The first one we have is right tag. With right tag, it's a free system. You sign up uh, or you put into it any hashtag you want, and it will come back and tell you here are all the associated hashtags around that theme. So those are the ones that you use. And you put it into a new tool I actually have invented called Excel. Actually, I can but the key is you put it into an Excel spreadsheet, you now know the different hashtags people are using for any given theme that you want to look at. And so when you begin to retweet or you begin to post out things on LinkedIn or Instagram, you put in the hashtags that are going to be important to the market. That broadcasts to anyone who's searching for that hashtag. And you also put it in the at handles of key people 
that goes to their follower base. So if you put my name on, you're going to go out to 30,000 people, and they begin to gravitate towards you because you're talking about something of interest to them. I'm crazy to find work. The second one is hashtagify me. So what I did is I wanted to look for a, uh, this is auto engineering. And so here's the popularity of the terms. Here are the top influencers. Here are, is a word cloud of the different things that are around that term. Here's the countries the discussions being held in. And there's a spelling variance of that word. And that's just a portion of what you get for free. So you can go in and analyze who's talking about what, where, and what else are they talking about when they're talking about that term. Everybody okay? So hashtags are really critical to what you do. Then you can also, you want to go out and find some themes. And so what you want to do is find great content and then curate it to your follower base. Every time I do a retweet, I average two to five people who come in that are new, because they saw it, because I have a good hashtag, use the at handle. And so this is great. I also give you tools like channel crawler and listen notes that are, do, that are dedicated to uh, videos as well as podcasts. So you can find the best there. So if you have extra time, you can pop in a podcast and listen to a, an expert talk about it. And the great content, then you want to tell it to your followers on Twitter, LinkedIn, and Instagram. That means you become an amplifier. So here's a great one, BuzzSumo. BuzzSumo is great because what it does is it takes a given theme and it allows you to find all the newest, most relevant articles on it. And in addition to just giving you the article, it goes through and it says, here's how popular they are on the social media. And the last one is the total number of engagements. It also shows you the backlinks, which are the links that are within the document that link to other things, which is good for search engine optimization. And here are the different topics that they're talking about. And it's free. And so what you do is you go out there every so often, you find something that was just published, you read it, if it's really good, take it, tell everybody in the world about it. And they'll begin to follow you. The other thing is there are virtual communities out there. Those that hang together with the hashtags, the ad handle, they have keywords that are interesting to them. And they basically are exchanging content through these systems, Twitter, LinkedIn, and uh, Instagram here in the US. WeChat is really big in China, as well as India. So there are different ones. We have the big ones here. But there are also virtual, actual communities that are structured. There's three types. The first is a public community, which you can create on Facebook. That means you can see it on search. Anybody can read it, and anybody can comment on things. Those you don't want to get into, because there's no control. The second one, better, it's a private community. That is, you can see it, you can search for it, but you can't comment on it until you register. And so that allows the people that own the community to, to vet people and put in the people they want. The third type is one that's used a lot, especially in healthcare, and those are secret communities. Those are by invitation only. You can't search for them. You can't see them, but they're there. And if you're allowed in, you can then engage with people. And so doctors use that a lot. Uh, there are some engineering. Uh, I work with an electrical company, and we have one for CEOs. And so we spend a lot of time vetting the people. We only let in the CEOs we want, and we spend a lot of money to bring experts to them in webinars that are completely private and secret. So you don't get to see them, but they're there. And so the key is, what you want to do is for your topics and themes you wrote down, or the industry you're in, go out and search and put the word forum after it, bulletin board, 
or community, and you will find there are lots of communities. For example, this is one, uh, for example, I went out and just put in engineering forums. And so here's an article of the top 40 engineering forums that are available. Here are different groups. Here's an engineering forum right there. And essentially, these are fairly large communities of engineers talking about engineering stuff, which is a marketer. I have no idea what they're saying, but that's what they do. Um, a good one, another one that's a good example. Have you ever heard of Global Spec? Global Spec is a, pro, is a community of 7 million engineers talking engineering stuff 365 days a year. All right? So if you go out to Global Spec, it's also called now Engineering 360 because it was bought by IEEE. This is their main page. If you go in, oh, sorry, it's 8 million industry professionals and what they have are products and services, but they also have a very vibrant community. So if you go out and you look at their um, C4 group, over here are communities that they have established, CR4, and then here's some of the newest things that they were releasing. And if you go out to it, here's a Biomed and Biotech, Biobec, and there's what? 671 threads and 10,000 comments from people that are, are donated, that are in it. And here's the types of things they're discussing. Some of which are jobs, and others are just conversations around biomed. You need to be a part of that. You need to be a part of the discussion that's going on in your area of interest. And it doesn't take a lot to do that. It's just contributing to places where you know you have expertise to help somebody else out who is also an engineer somewhere in the world that's having a problem or needs some knowledge. Because it might be somebody really important. Interesting? So the key thing you want to do is you need to not focus on do, curating a lot of content because that's hard and time consuming, but curating content's a breeze. And you know when people are talking about things that are relevant and right, that there's an entire massive community of some of the older people like me, and I can say that because I got gray hair, that are out of touch with some of this, but we know we need to get in touch. And we need an expert like you to tell us. That's how you become an influencer. So I like to look at it as 95% or more should be curated content, maybe a little creative content, but find the topics that they want, the themes, connect with them using the tools we just talked about, developing a source where you can find the best stuff, and then consistently retweet it out. We call it the nine minutes a day plan, three minutes at the morning, three minutes in the afternoon, three minutes in the evening. Go through and find the influencers and they have the good stuff that you've already got coming to your Twitter site or your LinkedIn site, and you just sit there going to retweet. Comment, really good article, hashtag, hashtag, a couple of candles, and you send it out. You do that every day, and you will build hundreds, if not thousands, of followers. And you never know where it ends up. You know, I have a, I'm teaching an undergraduate program in the IMC, and we have, out of our class of 20, we have two that are in conversations with CEOs about possibly getting hired. They just happen to connect. The CEO is out looking and find them to be credible and start talking to them. Because that's what we do in the community. So you got to be a part of it, and it's happening all the time, so you want to do that. Also, out there I have a whole series of videos that you can uh, link up, and we've got some copies of the presentation where you can go out and look at them. Or if you go out to my digital channel, which is 
uh, is good digital channel. I have all sorts of things on building your business, doing your planning, how to do that. In addition, I have all the videos on all the different types of social analytics systems you can use for free, how to use them, why to use them, and tips on, on making them work. So the other thing is I'm teaching a course 490. It's called Digital Marketing for the Engineer and the Entrepreneur. And what we're going to do is two things. We are actually going to build your professional persona in the industry and country you want to be in. And we're going to go through it every week for 10 weeks, building and growing your persona. And I'll teach you how to blog easily. It's called a filter and focus blog. We'll learn how to market the blog out. You'll learn how to podcast because you're going to do your own podcast on the topic of interest to your target market and we'll market it to your market. And then we will show you how to build this every day in a way that's easy to do. The second thing we do is we actually take a real company and we're going to build a 52 week marketing plan. Then we're going to build the budget. Then we're going to figure out the performance funnel and the KPIs, key performance indicators. Then we're going to cost justify it. And then we're going to present it to a real live CEO that they can give us feedback. And if we're lucky, if we do it right, they'll actually use it, which is pretty cool. So it's actually how to actually get into that. And so if you want to contact me, here's my contact information. And this is my last slide. So I'm done. I open up the forum to you. Questions, comments. I won't go criticism. <laughs> Do you have any questions? This is your chance to ask. Any of paying me the big bucks? What would you is there anybody out there? Yes. Well, I kind of have a question related sure. to this because I think a lot of our students are, are, are doing job searching. Mm -hmm. So is there like a, a, a spin on this where you don't ne necessarily find influencers, but you find good jobs? Like, is there a way to do that? If, yeah. if you understand what I'm saying? Like, yeah, not they people, do. but like things? Yeah, well, first off, like on a site like MobileSpec, they already have, people are posting out positions. The other thing I would do is I look at the companies, you know, remember this social stuff works just as well on companies and individuals as it does anything else. So I would go out and search for that and see if I the companies I wanted to work for, I try to develop and figure out who like here's what I do. The first thing I do is go to the company where you want to get hired, figure out the title of the individual you want to be hired by, not HR. And then go out and follow them on LinkedIn. And you have a beautiful thing. You just say, hi, I'm a student at Northwestern in MEM with a real interest in whatever industry the company's in. I'd like to follow you. And follow them. Then, when you have good information, when you put it out on your LinkedIn, it'll go to them. And they'll go, hey, suddenly you're different than every other student. You're now in the conversation. You're showing them you have expertise, right? So I do that. Then I would also go out and using social mention, put the word, put the, the name of the company, not the company, the industry you want to be in or the, the title, and put, you know, you want to go and look for employment or job apps or whatever the right term would be and go out and find them. If they're posting it online, these, com these systems pick it up. So you can bring it to you. Because when they post something out online, like a job position, you can go pick that up through social and then go and respond to it. That makes sense? Everybody's talking on social. Everything that happens on social gets sucked in to the system. When I say social, it also includes websites. So if they're posting out something, you can pick it up with these tools and then have it edge up. In the classes, are we going to have uh, people, for example, CEOs of other companies coming and give uh, conversations or something yep. like that? Yeah, and when we do the final, we'll actually get up in front of the CEO or CMO of the company and give them our solution. 
And so this isn't theoretical. It's let's do it. And I'm going to show you and give you the big data systems and the cloud systems and cluster systems and how to define a market, how to quantify it, how to value it, and how to build a what we call hero hub and help strategy that is essentially pioneered by small companies you may have heard of called Google and YouTube. And so we're using strategies developed in 2016 that are really successful because they integrate social and traditional marketing into one plan. And see, when you get up in front of the companies, you know, when I give you the companies in my class, I don't tell them what to do. I don't tell them anything, except here's the methodology we're going to use. Then I give you some questions. You guys start asking the questions, and we build everything from there. So you're not being pushed into my little squares of how to do it. You're taking a real business problem and giving them a solution, and I just help you through it over the course of 10 weeks. And I give you the resources and the guidance. And you know, we don't want to do things wrong, but we want to have a tailored solution where you put together all the puzzle pieces and they all fit, because that's what marketing is all about. Other questions? Um, yes. Is it a group project or? Yes. Group project? Yeah, we put you into groups of five okay. um, so that you can talk to each other and the, there's a group dynamic. And what you end up with is there's right brain analytics people, left brain creatives. And by mixing those two together is where you get really great ideas. And there's lots of, every week you have an assignment that kind of moves us through the methodology. So we know by the time we get to the final presentation that this is going to work. Um, are we going to read cases, business cases of how digital marketing is going like through uh, these days, from Google Day to, I don't know, like, well, we're good. first off, we're going to, yeah, I give you lots of new things that are coming out on data privacy and the newest trends, and here's how, you know, online systems. But you'll also watch videos. I've got a whole video library that's a part of the class where you'll see, for example, we go into Taco Bell and we show how they are using social war rooms for real-time engagement with people and why that's a benefit to them. You also, I bring in a speaker every class who's an expert on something and they'll talk to you about AI, what's happening on the cutting edge of AI, what's happening on the cutting edge of privacy, what's happening on the cutting edge of new technologies being developed, how to do IoT, how to do you know wearables. And so we have a wide range of speakers that come in so you don't have to listen to me drone at you for three hours. I'll let somebody else drone at you for an hour. Sound good? Sounds good. Yeah. I mean, I'm always open to whatever is new and hot. Like right now, my classes are spending a lot of time talking about what is going on in the EU with privacy. And there's a new France. France has just filed some suits that are going to foundationally change the way ad tech works, which means it undercuts Facebook and undercuts a lot of these companies. And so this is a heavy duty issue. And I bring in experts to talk about. You know, what's happening there? Because you need to know. Right? And so one of the things I get, I, I talk about give to get, but I and filter and focus. I don't know, I tell my students I don't know doodle beans about anything, but I know the top experts in huge amounts of areas. Because I network with them. And in fact, every speaker I bring in, most of them I have a 10 plus year relationship with. And I never met them ever, except on social. I go on my Twitter feed and I say, who's the best podcasting expert? Well, Pam Muldoon. So I contact Pam Muldoon. Would you do my class? Well, no way he's ever asked me to do a class. I'm asking. So she comes in virtually and talks about podcasting. Because she's done it for 15 years. And she knows how. And she gives us tips. Right? That's how I work, you know? I bring in the best people on video logs, or V-logs, they call it video blogs. And you hear them, and you talk to them, ask them questions. They can answer a lot better than I can. This is social, this is the way things work today. I don't need to meet them, I just need to know who they are and they can come in virtually into my class and talk. I don't have to fly out to meet them. 
know their quality because they've been reading their stuff for a couple of years and re, re, you know, retweeting it and commenting on it. That's how it works. Does that make sense? The entire, is there anything, are there any questions online? There's people just asking for their presentation slides. Oh, we can do that, sure. Yeah. Yeah. Should I have them contact you, Randy, or what's yeah. the Yeah, you have my email? Yeah. Here? Yeah, tell them to send me an email, I'll send it to them. I can use it that. Yes, sir. I'm kind of crashing this. I'm not a student. I'm a graduate from the MEM program. Well, then you have to leave. No, <laughs> that's great. But I, I saw the newsletter, so I decided to come by. I'm actually looking for the opposite. That's why I thought I'd come in here and get the playbook on one side. I'm looking to hire people. Right. So can you address that from a, from a hiring standpoint, how I'd look for you know, micro-searching for specific people? Yeah, I think what you I'd look for things like people that are good at content curation, digital marketing, um, you know, the building networks. And so what you want to look for is people that have some background in Marketing as well as the technology side of it that are kind of in the confluence of both of them. And so you want to, in the interviews, you want to talk about are you using, you know, things professionally like Twitter and LinkedIn and things, and how would you recommend they do that, you know, and how do they know things like hashtags? And, I guess, and I guess what I'm, I'm asking is okay. I'd want to I'd uh, use some approach similar to this for finding talent. And, right. and recruiting people. Is that, what you're, is that what you're addressing? Yeah, so what I would do is I'd go out and use these tools and say, who's an expert in digital marketing or digital content creation? And then what I would do is follow them, and if they actually seem to be really connected with the, with the group, go to somebody like an Eric Fallman, and you can actually tell him I sent you and do it to Twitter. And E-R-I-K Wallman, Google Man is what he's the handle is. And he could say, here are the here are some people that are in the industry that are really quality, based on whether you want to hire somebody right out of college or somebody with some experience. They people are happy to help out each other if you just ask. Because what you're doing is you're acknowledging the expert as someone like an Eric Wallman, and then you're giving them kudos. As a result, that grows their base. It grows their, you know, esteem and their authority. And you know, then, and they're willing to help you out to do that. That's what I do. Yeah. You know? The key is one of one of the things I tell my class is that influencers want fame and fortune, but it's not fame and fortune like you think. Their fame comes from the number of followers they have. The fortune they make is from becoming an influential marketing expert, in other words, being able to be an influencer within the uh, community. So you're giving them kudos, and in doing that, that has benefit for you and for them. Randy, I think we, we have to end, because we're going to have a, the room is being occupied in about a minute. Oh, great. So, I'm with you. Yeah, no, so thank you so much for your presentation. Today. Thank you.